Yeah, welcome back. It's still uh, breakfast on Plus TV Africa, and we're glad to know that you're still there and watching us. And uh, when I started, I started alone. Uh, my colleague, well, Lagos happened to my colleague. <laughs> so, <laughs> Kofi has just joined I don't, me. Now. I don't like it when people say Lagos happened to me. Lagos <laughs> is a good thing. We need to speak positive things, you know. Lagos happened like, to me. Like someone said yesterday, Nigeria is moving forward, you yeah. know, yeah. even with the results of the election, the country has made progress. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so and we're looking at the brighter side of. Okay, life. so now what <laughs> happened to you? You came, yeah. you came a bit late. <laughs> no, Were no, you no, not no. in traffic? No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, you're welcome. It's, it's uh, um, the um, breakfast. Mm. I almost said it's a late edition. Mm. It's a breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Just like yesterday, you said it was Plus Politics. Yeah. <laughs> you know, where we used to be, yeah. where we used to be before, mm -hmm. you know, we had a radio upstairs and TV downstairs yeah. at the point. Yes. Okay, one day, I, no, radio... TV upstairs, sorry, at the point. I want to run upstairs to do TV and I so this is Paradise 105.5 <laughs> FM. <laughs> you know what I'm it talking happens, about? It happens. Hey man, it was it was it wasn't funny, man. <laughs> but anyway, um we, we would like to uh, look at what the papers are saying this morning. Chris Kenny wonders a chartered arbitrator, UK um trained a chartered arbitrator, and he'll be joining us along the line as we look at what the papers are saying today. We will start off with um uh, the new telegraph, which is a uh, I don't the usual publication we have on this on this program, but a very interesting stories on the new telegraph. Let's look at this one. Nigeria's revenue threatened as Exxon units declare force majeure. Uh, that is in the oil and gas sector. Nigeria's revenue threatened as Exxon units declare force majeure. Exxon has to do with what we normally call mobile. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, more from the paper. Cash crisis. A cash crisis. POS deals. Rise thirty nine point one seven percent to three hundred and twenty three point seven zero billion naira in Q one twenty twenty three. You know this these POS deals. I think uh, the government can look into into that. It's probably because of a failure of banking. The banking mm, system yeah. not being able to give Nigerians what they want, quick service. I and people just don't want to go to the banks. They prefer to just go to the street corner and and do the POS thing, which is a phenomenon. I think it's interesting. Energy cost report. Uh, projects sustained inflation in Nigeria. Energy costs report projects sustained inflation in Nigeria. Uh, Buhari, Nigeria made 200 billion naira, uh, $7 million from issuance of PPLs. Uh, I wonder if he said that while in Saudi Arabia or the president said that on behalf of him. But uh, UK Parliament watchdog probes uh, PM. Tribunal throws out petition against Kalu's victory. Opusunju backs Igbo Senate presidency, drums support for Kalu, NLC to workers, arrest imposters plotting to destroy LP. Um, the NLC and its hierarchy was at um, the LP headquarters. Mm. I think it was yesterday. The crisis was, in that part is so bad that in Imo State it, it, they had like four uh, factions of the L, uh, LP, and sometimes you suspect that uh, they are fifth columnists within the, the party, and they are also. Uh, people who are doing their best to make sure that there's a scot mm. in, in the discord in the Labour Party. Interesting. What, we'll see how the drama goes. Yes. So, so the NLC was, um, uh, leadership was at the LP headquarters, yeah. and they said they went there to fumig fumigate rodents. <laughs> 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 you know, the, the, the comedy in the policy is is is, is amazing. They went there to fumigate rodents is what they said. Um, Seven hundred Nigerians die from oral cancer, uh, oral cancer annually in Hanire. Oh my oral cancer, and I saw something some years ago about the causes, uh, some of the causes of oral cancer, which we may not want to go into at this point. Uh, Jump uh, extends 2023 direct entry registration by one week. Uh, alleged 5.2 billion naira fraud. Key witness in ex Jam registrar's trial dies. Sad one there. Um, but you know, if you were the ex jam registrar, you might, if that might witness was going to testify <laughs> against you. Uh, unions ground activities at airports, Syrica appeals to aviation workers to end strike. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that, that, that a prediction or that suspicion yesterday, mm -hmm. we weren't sure if they were going to follow through with their, their threat. They actually did. They did. They so did. for those who had the flights to make yesterday, they would have had to go by road which for some is not even an alternative. Northern Christian elders, Buhari shouldn't leave killings as parting gift. Uh, IGP, CMR certificates no longer valid as digital uh, vehicle registration process begins. Um, I'm not too comfortable when the police talk about vehicles because, you know, it's not really their role mm. to, to register vehicles and all that. So I'm not comfortable because 
what we see is they usually would capitalize on that to enrich themselves. Uh, today, uh, everybody does, does everything. Civil, uh, civil defense will, will, will catch you for the papers that you don't have. have you are, Peace Corps will catch you. Everybody just comes you know, and cashes out uh, from uh, uh, commuters and all that. And uh, it's very unfortunate. You know, you ask yourself what civil uh, defense is doing with, with uh, vehicle papers. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I normally say when they come out, say, these ones that were begging us two years ago or so to allow them to carry weapons. Yeah. I saw a civil defense, you know, doing a, what do you call it, uh, um, escort services, VIP escort services with their, with their helocs. And they were flogging people out of the way, you know, and they jumped down of the car. I think they saw the biofield. They jumped out with their guns, brah, like police, zoomed into the petrol station with the VIP, jumped out with the guns and weapons. I said, my God, you guys were begging us just two <laughs> years ago to allow you to carry weapons. Oh, my. Anyway. Power corrupts. Uh, my, absolutely. Absolute yeah. Yeah. In, in Nigeria, we say uniform corrupts <laughs> because it's a peace corps. Yeah, you know, it's all, you just have peace corps coming up. They, the bill is now. I, I think they're passing it into law to make them recognized. So they've they've been there for over ten years trying to get that recognition. I think it's finally coming through. I do hope that when they come, they'll feel the security uh, apparatus mm -hmm. that we have in this country, mm -hmm. but not add to mm -hmm. the chaos that we find. Uh, from the uniform I th I, people. I think you, deep down, you already know they will add to the chaos. <laughs> deep down, you, you know, it was a peace um, civil defense that killed a driver in Port Harcourt mm. off NTA in Boba Road mm. about two years ago. A bus driver, you know, a commercial bus driver or uh, bus taxi, like they call it. He came down and one thing later, he shot the guy. The guy died. There were protests all over Port Harcourt by the uh, uh, commercial drivers. But the life was already wasted. Civil defense. Didn't have guns before. Obas and Job brought these guns. Yeah, well, but even, the, even the civilians that are not supposed to carry guns are still shooting each other. So well, they, well, the gains will far outweigh the, the bad. There must be bad eggs in every... Whether you go to America... You yeah, can, go, don't, don't, <laughs> don't tell that to the family, the family of the... Yeah, well, anyway... Let's take the it's last. True. It's, it's true. Let's, let's take the last. Don't tell the family of the of the of the the, the, the the driver who lost his life. Let it be said that a criminal shot. He's a bad man. He mm. should be treated as a yes. man, yeah. not as civil defense. It's, it's terrible. Anyway, supplementary polls. INEC suspends the Damawa wreck. Uh, warns him to stay away from commission's office until further notice. Directs uh, administrative society uh, secretary to take full charge. Uh, without partisan corrupt officials, PDP governors tell INEC uh, are some of the stories on the front page of the New Telegraph. It was, it was quite um, funny uh, to, to watch what happened in Adamawa State. And I, I said something on Twitter yesterday that, you know, you know Nigerian comedians, the likes of Brother Shaggy, mm. Mr. Macaroni, please name some for me. Mm. Um, AY. AY. Basket, Basket Mouth. Mouth. You know. Daniel the Humorous, yeah. okay, Bakasi, cannot give us content <laughs> as much that as will <laughs> supersede the content that Nigerian politicians are giving us <laughs> on a daily basis. They can't. They can't. I'm telling you. But it's, apart, it's, apart, apart from the money that these guys are making from government or from whatever they do as a government agency, they should open the YouTube channels where they can upload the videos of what they do so they can make money as well. <laughs> yes, because Nigerian politicians and those who work in the, in the government are, are content creators. Every comedy look at what, content. Comedy content, yeah, thank you. Comedy content. Okay. Um, look Remember some time ago where um, something happened in the National Assembly and all the senators, House of Rep members were climbing the fence. And I, and I was like, what? Oh my These people God. came from bulletproof cars and are uh, climbing the fence like, uh, like students that uh, are running away from the hostel. It's, 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 it's crazy. But the ones of uh, the likes of Dino Milaye and uh, the likes of um, uh, former Ikiti State Governor, Fa um, uh, Faishi, mm. who when they were summoned to court, Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, became ill. Very ill. Very um, Ill. Um, was it Faisha who was wearing this neck Faisha, brace that, yes. that, that that is given to people who have spinal he was in spinal cord? <laughs> <CPR pains. laughs> he was in What was his name? Um, I didn't know I couldn't walk to court. It had yeah. to wheel him. But there was a video we saw a picture of him sitting up to eat, you know, yeah. in a private room. All right, we move on to leadership very quickly. Um, INEC, or well, Adamwa governorship. INEC has no power to void my declaration. Binani tells court. She's already gone to court, and people need to know that. 
um, uh, Aisha Binani uh, accepted the, um, the, uh, the victory, okay, and gave an acceptance speech. And now she's really said, annoying the way people are directing others to court. It's as if, you know, anything you want to do, I can do anything I want and then send you to the court. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's terrible. It's mm -hmm. as if the courts are in some people's pockets. Mm -hmm. You see? So, so she's gone to court already. And um, the, the uh, talk here is that um, I saw an, an interview that um, uh, Senator uh, Abo. Uh, Abo, the one who... Um, who Elisha Abu, who snapped, who slapped, uh, what's it called again? Who slapped uh, uh, a, a, a woman at a sex toy shop, mm. a sex toy shop in Abuja. He was on, um, uh, quoted at, at, uh, on channels television. Uh, he is a senator representing a number one North Central District, Ishako Aboya. He was quoted as saying that the Electoral Act, as amended in 2022, inhibits INEC from declaring the collation of results in Adama said null and void, mm -hmm. okay? In other words, he's saying that um, once it has been declared, all right, it is null and void and of no effect for INEC to, uh, um, to, to say that to they... To nullify mm, it or... Yes, yes, right. It is, it, it, INEC can say that the, the result is null and void, you understand, and of no effect. That was what, those are the words of uh, Fesu Zokoye, mm -hmm. who is the... Uh, uh, the the uh, INEC National Commissioner of Information and Voter Education. So what Senator Bo said on 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 a fellow, you know, uh, TV station, mm. uh, is that uh, um, uh, what do you call it? That they have already proclaimed, you know, made a procl proclamation, and you can't go back. You understand? You know, it's like this thing we do when we're children. Was the person <laughs> who did the proclamation give, vested with the powers to do so? That is what now... Because if it, if it had no powers to do so, that means if you let it go, tomorrow anybody can just wake up and declare. Well, because I hope, so long as he's working with yeah, INEC. I hope our guests will be able to throw more light on that. Because as it stands, and he's an arbitrator, so mm -hmm. he'll be able to tell us. Say, you know, as it stands, they've gone to court. You know, and the judge will have to say, no... You have, uh, I know you can't take your words back. You don't talk them already. You know, you can't take it back. It's like what we say in, uh, in a local parlance, I will see. <laughs> <laughs> this one is I will, an I will see situation. They've seen it. Those. Anyway, more from the leadership. Uh, defend Nigeria at all costs. COS charges troops. Uh, NLC vows to flush out usurpers from Labour Party. That's where they went to the party's headquarters and said they are there to... to um, to uh, to chase out rodents, mm. uh, you know, to spray rodents. I don't know with uh, shell talks or something. Um, uh, passengers trek to catch flight as unions ground airports. It's a really sad one. Um, hope rises for Nigerian children as FG okay, it's, okay, it's the Oxford malaria, malaria vaccine. You know, the Ghanaians are the first to ad ad accept that. And now we have uh, um, uh, the N Nigeria saying that. They can do that. It can be used as well. Uh, stop killings in southern Kaduna, Benue Taraba. Uh, now, Ogun woman sells 18-month-old baby to offset bank loan. Okay. Uh, 2.4 <laughs> billion naira debt. Amcon takes over assets of uh, Giano, Nigeria. Okay. Uh, stories from the leadership. Yeah. We'll take the next paper, which happens to be the punch. Fuel subsidy. FG begins 40% pay rise for workers April ending. It's quite an interesting one. The riders to that, government will settle January, March arrears later, says Labor Ministry. Increased transport housing allowances. Also, TUC tells FG. Mm. PDP governors demand a Damawa Rex trial. Binani sues Anek. External reserves slide further to $35 billion. Marginal oil fail sale generated 200 and three billion naira says Buhari. Okay. Uh, we, striking we aviation to, workers reject we'll government have to plea. Increase, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. We have Chris uh, Kendo one on standby, yes. but please permit me to take the the final paper, and then we will put Chris on. Uh, Two point eight billion naira gas pipeline progressing to power uh, to power three thousand six hundred megawatt plants. FG uh, are some of the stories on the front page of the. Uh, the punch you can see there, striking aviation workers reject government plea, threaten total uh, shutdown. The final paper we have on our table this morning is the Daily Independent. FG may spend more than $800 million earmarked for palliative. Minister explains why cost of servicing foreign debt is rising. 
Labour Party crisis, NLC president others lead Abure to party sectariat in Abuja, one factional chairman a papa to stay away. Maybe you can go and stay in a papa while this is happening. Aviation minister warns strikes may lead to economic losses. INEC asks controversial Adamawa wreck to stay away from office, as some of the stories on the Daily Independent. Hmm. Okay, well, uh, so much to talk about, but we're glad that we're being joined by our guests today. And uh, our guest is uh, uh, Chris Kainde Wandu, and he is an arbiter, a chartered arbitrator. Uh, trained in the UK and here in Lagos. Hello, Chris. Good morning and welcome to the program. That being said, let's start up with a story. Uh, Yamgo, you take this one. and uh, oh, We start with the story from the, uh, uh, the first one from the leadership. INEC has no power to void my declaration, Binani tells court. Uh, what are your thoughts on that, Chris? Uh, well, Nigeria, Nigeria is the case of the absorbed where anything goes. You know, you are talking about basket mouth, talking about uh, um, AY and the rest of it. Nigeria is like Charlie Boy Show. On Charlie Boy Show, anything can happen. And that is what's happening clearly now. So where everybody takes the time to exam, irrespective of what happens and down the consequences. What you see happening now uh, in uh, Adamawa is the case of the absorb, where people are trying to tramp on the constitution, the 1999 constitution as well as the electoral act as amended 2022. Um, the uh, Benani years have gone to court, but what you need to ask as, as we say in law, you can't place something on nothing. You, want, you need to ask yourself, the declaration that was made, was it made by the person recognized by the constitution of the electoral act to announce the result? So if, he, if that result was not aroused, announced by the appropriate person, then whatever has been done is in total nonity and void uh, is void the uh, ab initial to say so um she has a right to go to court but the fact is that uh, what has been done is total illegality and how can you announce a result when collision is still going on and to even add more so to it the woman quickly ran to nta the live program to read her acceptance speech knowing fully well that the result that was announced by the red was wrong and he did not have the power to do it. And more absorbed is the fact that even the REC had uh, in the attendance why he was making that announcement. Top security uh, the chiefs, the commissioner of police was there, the director of DSS was there, and even the commandant of the uh, of civil defense in the state, giving some level of legitimacy. I think proper um, uh, we are, we have, the authorities have to take immediate action to be able to either redeploy the security chiefs or even retire them entirely for what they've done. What they did was more like a civilian group, which must not stand. So INEC, I must commend INEC headquarters for reacting and immediately nipping the that action in the court before it spiraled into something else. But whatever was done by the NEG is not recognized by the electoral and under the constitution. It's totally Irrespective of whatever Benani does, I think I'm I need to be able to go ahead and declare that result as it were and let it be declared. But that injunction to be vacated. I don't know whether it's an interlocutory injunction or perpetual injunction. Definitely it can be a perpetual injunction. So within the next few days, that um, injunction should be vacated. And I need to go ahead and announce the result. And that is what we've been some of us have been saying. During this election, uh, since the since the election, where people try to win and all meets are not asked to go to court. That is the new norm in Nigeria. That is the way of our politicians. And the um, the uh, a candidate of APC was trying to catch, catch on that and uh, get herself announced. And the burden of proof will be on the PDP governorship candidate. But as far as I'm concerned, that is not that uh, announcement. Not, uh, regarded uh, at INEC, definitely constant. So that is what it is. Well, uh, apart from the fact that it, she was granted interview by a government agency, which is NTA, um, even knowing the facts that they knew, um, people are also concerned about the fact that uh, they, 
the supposed punishment that has been given to him is a slap on the wrist and he deserves more than that and not only him but everybody that is seen to be culpable in that act. Uh, what do you think about that kind of punishment that they give to the person? Because some people are seeing that as a, as a way of trying to truncate the process of democracy and uh, in fact the, the national, national peace even. So they're seeing it as treason, they're seeing it as a very big crime that deserves more and a stiffer punishment. What do you think? Anek has done the right thing. Um, the first thing is to be able to shove him aside and ask him to step aside. When investigation will go on, don't, don't forget, irrespective of whatever he did, it has to be investigated. And uh, the due process has to be followed. So what Anik has done is to, uh, um, to uh, ask him to step aside, the investigation will be carried out. And if he found, if he was, if he's found culpable of the offense, then the relevant authorities will get him arrested and prosecute him. INEC does not have the power to um, arrest and prosecute. That is in the purview of the security agencies. And we're talking about the police, this case. And the what do you say? As I mentioned earlier, the commissioner was seated there where that illegality was going on. So the punishment should not only go to him as the red, but also um, the various security chiefs that were at that point. Are, you, are they saying that they don't know uh, about the the, the, the law as it regards um, the um, electoral act as well as the constitution. And more importantly is the fact that that wreck also put the life of his members, staff of INEC into, uh, into danger. You could see how a national um, uh, a electoral commissioner that was deployed to a uh, Madame State was beating black and blue and stripped naked. I'm sure you saw that video. They, mistake, they mistook him for the man and he was not a person. He was not able involved in that because most of them were not part of that shira. But you know, they got hold of him and beat him to stoop. Well, that's a professor, um, a professor in one of the uh, institutions. He was beaten black and blue and almost killed just because of the recklessness of um, of this, uh, this uh, pardon my use of word, this foolish uh, man. But uh, as I said, the law should be able to take its course and the agencies of government uh, that need to do the relevant thing should be able to do that and make sure that that kind of investigation is what he did. Okay. All right, Chris, let's look at more uh, uh, stories. So we'll go over to the, uh, the Daily uh, Independent. Uh, I'm sorry, swinging back and forth. Um, the Daily Independent has this lead story um, bordering on the fuel subsidy removal. Um, I almost said fuel subsidies come. I had to go back. <laughs> it almost rolled off my tongue. Um, it says FG may spend more than $800 million earmarked for palliative. You know all about the palliative um, we're all expecting some of that money to come. We're expecting to be um, part of the 50 million people who received the palliative. You know, they said Father Abraham has many sons. Mm. I am one of them, and so are you. <laughs> so so I, I don't know whether you'll be one of them. I want to be one of them. But Chris, what are your thoughts on what the Daily Independent is saying? More than $800 million, FG may spend more than that earmark for the palliative. Well... Kofi, I'm not one of them, but I'm sure you're one of them. <laughs> I don't, need your, I don't, don't, I don't you want to be at least get your national cake? 50 million people, that's a lot of people. I mean, it's not impossible that... Out of 200 plus. Well, well... <laughs> out, out of 200, they've chosen 50, uh, 50, million. 50 million, whichever way they did it. Don't forget that they also did that during the COVID period, and they shared it among themselves. So I don't know, the so-called data that they're trying to, uh, all about to me is total fake. Uh, it's total fair because that has been before by the, the National Assembly during the, the, the adult committee that was raised to investigate that, and they will find so many fictitious names in that. Reason. But I'm not surprised. Um, this is this government, anything goes. Uh, don't forget that uh, from the report we're getting, out of that $800 million, about 50 something million, close to 60 million, will be used for administrative purposes. 60 something million dollars for administrative purposes to share 800 million. And I asked myself, who are they deceiving? If we pump that money into reviving the uh, moribund um, refineries, uh, yes, refineries that have been on that they promised to revive since 2015, then we wouldn't have been where we are. If they push that even into building one single new one, we wouldn't be where we are. Because the part remains is that. In as much as, no matter how we look at it, if we don't do the right footings, as I've always said at this program, 
by making sure that our refineries are, are, are working. All the so-called subsidies, removal, or whatever, is just trash. Because this is one and only country, probably, in the world that produces crude oil imports, import petroleum. What we need to do is to have a holistic um, look at our refineries and making sure that they are revived and we can be able to refine our crude locally. All the money that we are spending in importing petroleum will be reduced. We are not even any more, much more, um, from, um, uh, from the sales of crude and uh, our foreign exchange is doing it on a daily basis. So the little we have, we, uh, we push into uh, buying petroleum products. And ECOFI, for now, we are using close to about 80% of our, uh, our uh, current earnings to service debt. We are not even servicing the debt. We are just uh, uh, servicing the accruing interest on those debts. So um, sharing, uh, is, so the, this is the same way this Ministry of Humanitarian uh, said that they were feeding our children that were at home during COVID. I don't know how many of the children were fed. Mine were not fed. And they spent billions and billions of naira that they are not even accounting for. So the issue of this $800 uh, million uh, dollars palliative that they said going to, to me is rubbish. Then taking that a, a stretch for that, don't forget that till now we don't know how much we consume in terms of uh, the number of um, liters that we consume. Um, the uh, controller general of custom came out some time ago, some months back, to say that he does not believe the, the, the figures being brandished by NNPC about a, a local consumption. Because, take it for take for example, uh, during the COVID, there was total lockdown. And you see, the, uh, see NNPC is still giving us the same figure that we have been used across board over the years as consumption. When Nigerians were restricted from moving for close to three weeks or four weeks, how possible is that? So you can see that a lot of corruption within that system. So personally, I see that this is just a, a, a time for parting gift for some of those in government to share and just leave. Maybe it's their parting gift, but this share of um, $800 million per day doesn't sink with me at all. It doesn't. All right. Um, I think uh, we can, some people will say that the Minister of Finance has been trying, trying very hard to, um, to make sure that some money goes to the vulnerable, you know, and um, uh, uh, less privileged mm -hmm. Nigerians. Uh, so she's, been, she's been trying for almost a year, I think. Um, someone put the spanner in the works of this plan last year and later mm -hmm. they now reverted she's been trying really hard so um we have to give it to her she, no she's tried she's tried to pull push this through for the 50 million vulnerable nigerians to get something and it was it was rejected and she's come back with this plan again so she's trying she's been trying hard really <laughs> let's take some more of the, the headlines um the the uh, uh the aviation workers have been young and myself had a bit of um a, a, a discussion this yesterday, Chris. The aviation workers have shut down the airport. They carried through, through with the, uh, the threat. And um, we hear some, some of the airline passengers had to trek. I think that was what um, the leadership said. The passengers had to trek to catch a, their flights as the union ground airports. But I want us to pay attention to what the aviation minister is saying. Uh, on the front page of the Daily Independent, um, Hadi Sirika, uh, who um, just recently you know, uh, purchase some, some new, brand new firefighting vehicles for the airport. He's saying that the, um, the strikes may lead to economic losses. The strikes may lead to economic losses as workers paralyze activities at Lagos Airport and others. Chris. Well, um, we look at it from this point. Is it today that the unions um, raised the idea of going on um, one to this one strike? They've been saying this for over two weeks now. What did the government do? They called them to a meeting to resolve the issue. But that is how we grow in Nigeria. Until you embark on a strike, the government uh, will not listen to you, or employers of labor will not listen to you. So what will happen with INEC? Um, sorry. Um, INEC, INEC again. ASU. <laughs> <laughs> you, saw, you saw what happened with ASU, and for how long it took. It also happened within the health sector. You saw how long that our doctors was on strike. We are on strike. And you see the action being taken by House of Representatives that to even restrict Nigerians graduates um, from traveling abroad to uh, like their trade. But this action uh, by the aviation workers, they gave a warning strike for two weeks that they will go on this warning strike, and it's just for two days. And our uh, leaders, those in the Ministry of Labor, those in the aviation, and within, even within the presidency, did not. What you need to ask yourself is that 
where the demands were they legitimate. Of course they were. But let us not even read that because this is not the only country where people go on strike. Uh, Kofi, you know very well what happened in the United Kingdom some weeks back. Airlines went on strike. Those on the train, those um, uh, uh, train workers went on strike for weeks. And the same, the same thing with noises also in the United Kingdom. So it is not just in Nigeria. But ours is that why other countries strive to be able to be able to meet the demands of able to meet with, um, these workers to be able to sort out the issues as well. Ours, we sit down and wait on that. So for people trekking, well, it's not a surprise. Trekking is part of exercise. But I, I personally, <laughs> yes, it's part of exercise. You know that if we, most of us don't have the time to even exercise these days. So any opportunity I have to exercise, I will walk. But this was a, a, a strike that was foretold. I personally make sure that I clear my table that Monday, Tuesday, I'm not going to travel it. I just came back from the East. And I make sure my flight was supposed to be for Monday, but I, I pushed it back to Sunday. So I knew that this will take place. So um, I hope that this will just be only a warning strike and not because after a warning strike, there's going to be a strike proper. And I hope that these two days will just give the government the opportunity, windows of opportunity to be able to discuss with the unions and resolve most of these issues at stake so that we don't have a breakdown of total collapse within the aviation sector that is even struggling by now. If you know how much the aviation fuel is going for close to 1,000 naira per meter, the aviation industry is struggling so much. And whatever affects the aviation industry will affect the economy of the country. So I hope this issue will be resolved as quickly as possible that, uh, so that we don't have a full collapse of the aviation sector as it were. All right, interesting. Um, yesterday, uh, Julio Sabore, as we said earlier, uh, was led as the chairman of the Labour Party, or factional chairman, if you want to be fair. Uh, though some uh, uh, audience would probably stone me if they hear me saying factional chairman. Uh, he was led by the leadership of the NLC to the um, uh, Labour Party National Secretariat. Uh, he was led there. And uh, what the NLC president was quoted as saying was that uh, they were there to, um, to fumigate rodents from the NLC uh, headquarters. But this is what the Daily Independent says on its front page. Labour Party crisis, NLC others, lead Abure to party sectariat in Abuja, one factional chairman of Papa to stay away. Um, Chris, you and I know that this is not how it works, you know, because um, it is the, the judge, when he swipes his, hits his gavel on the, on the, what do you call that thing again? You are a mediator. He hits it on that table, and what he says will become law. So it's not by... I don't know whether you agree with, with that point, but what are your thoughts on that? Um, because I'm not just a charter arbitrator, I'm also a graduate of law. So I know the law. And the law is what it is, as we say in law. And we look at it from the point. If I, I don't know, I, I know that there was a, an order issued uh, by a court restraining Abre from parading himself as the chairman, national chairman of the Labour Party. Until that order is vacated, it remains what it is, irrespective of like If NLC, the whole of NLC globally, uh, decide to just uh, um, follow him to his office, that does not uh, reduce the fact that a court has a court of competent jurisdiction has restrained him from providing himself as the national chairman of the Labour Party. So what you need to do is to go back and make sure that that restraining order is vacated. Secondly, it's the same thing that happened to PDP. Well, it's the same thing that he's facing that Ayu is facing. Ayu has stepped aside and has continued to pursue his case at the uh, at the Benue uh, court to try to vacate that uh, decision of um, the court. And he's in court. So the same thing to go with um, uh, uh, with uh, Abre. He cannot go around and just be jockeying for one point. The law is the law. And what the law says, irrespective of whether you like what the law says or not, once a, 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 a restriction order has been placed on you, then you have no choice. You cannot cherry pick what you want and what you don't want. In um, Ayu has is pursuing his own case, trying to make sure that the court of case. And I think that we should do that as well. But um, trying to mobilize the, uh, the NLC or whatever um, to back him. Is not the solution to it. So, as far as this morning is concerned, as far as today is concerned, if that a case has not been vacated, he is not the national chairman of the uh, Labour Party. Whether it's political or that or anything, I don't, I, I don't. It doesn't bother me. The law is what it is, and I pray by the face of the law is not the national chairman of the Labour Party as of this morning. As, as I said, except that 
uh, that uh, injunction based on him has been vacated. All right, let's quickly look at this one away from politics. Uh, FGE OK's use of Oxford uh, malaria vaccine, um, it's still on the front page of Daily Pen, and I'm using that paper because it's captured most of what the other papers are saying. Um, the Ghanaians were the first in the world, and then Nigeria has followed suit. Are you, are you uh, concerned about, you know, some, some uh, this is too early, it's a vaccine, it's not really being tested or proven yet. Now we uh, go first use them, the Ghanaians and Nigerians. What are your thoughts on this, this new malaria vaccine? Um, uh, as it's been accepted, okayed, and approved by the federal government for use in Nigeria? I'm worried, uh, Kofi. I don't know why the rush. Uh, if Kofi has to talk, if my wife gave the land and come bump it today, I know God allowed them to give that uh, vaccine. Uh, because for me, um, yes, not as much as not I say that they have passed through due diligence and is approved. I don't know why we should be hurry. It's only Ghana. Nigeria is the second country to approve that after Ghana. I'm waiting up the yes, you can say that maybe European countries don't face the show malaria. Don't forget, uh, when it comes to global index, Nigeria has the highest number of malaria cases. I think globally we have about close to about 40 percent or there about of total malaria uh, population or whatever you call it in the world. I think we're about 89 percent or 40 percent. I read that report yesterday, but there's no need for us to be to be in a hurry because if you also look at the issue of COVID. Um, at a point, you can see that some of the vaccines that people rushed into the taking, even the manufacturers later on came to say that there was some default and the effect of this. Um, I would have expected the federal government to take its time. There's nothing to rush. Let us see how it goes and let it be more tests. And let's see other countries, more countries uh, engage in that. Then there are going to be some kind of test and evaluation of that particular um, uh, uh, usage by these countries before we rush it. But our, uh, the Director General of uh, uh, NADAG have come to say that it is safe and I can go ahead with it. I personally, to me, I'm not an interpreter journalist, and uh, I would have said that we should just wait. Um, but we should be very cautious in rushing into taking some of this. Uh, we okay. still have our malaria drugs uh, that we are still taking that is working for us, at a high rate. Uh, and that is still the way to go. I would be very cautious. Um, but I think it's still um, for the children. I don't think the, for now it's not going to be for adults. I think I heard that it's between the ages of six or, or to one to six or one to a kind of exact point. It's still within the for the children. But we shouldn't be in a hurry to embrace that person. Let us see it globally tested, okay. used, and confirmed before we rush. I don't know the rush why we are going to this rush. Okay. Uh, well, uh, there's so much to catch up on, Chris, but uh, we'll have to let you go at this time. And we'd like to say thank you for being a part of our show this morning. Thank you very much. And Kofi, uh, as one of the vulnerable, please go and collect your own chair. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's for less privileged. Uh, if you look, they said less privileged. Privilege. Less privileged. I am not less privileged. That's the underlying factor. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Have a wonderful day. Me too, me too. <laughs> well, less privileged. They said um, Nigeria... Uh, people living below the poverty index are uh, up to like 80 million. And then they singled out about 50 million. 50 million to they do. said the what? most vulnerable. Most vulnerable. So what they are, are they using to measure? My brother, I tell you what, if they were to do um, uh, draw it, um, Sibu should come forward um, to collect this money. You'd see people who are well dressed, people who drive cars to go there to collect theirs. Yeah, I see that a lot in Nigeria. So, so well, I, I, they have, their, their work is cut out for them. That's all I can say. <laughs> uh, we'll take a break, and when we return, we will delve straight into our first major conversation right here uh, on The Breakfast. Please stay with us. In the meantime, let's look how, at how the weather is today in Lagos.